All right, today's job's taking these five pines out, kind of in between the house and the garage. A little crowded in there. We're gonna follow them all down here. And then we're gonna use a pull rope for this first one through a block on that little pine to my truck. Then we'll also pull them down the driveway that way. I think we also have a couple kids from school who want to climb, so we might get some funny footage there as well. Got one down. That was the easy one. I think on that one there. And I didn't have the camera running. Just running around, trying to keep an eye on the boys. Do you have those limbs that might catch a gutter right there? So I think I'm gonna climb that and take just a few limbs off. All right, student number one, gaffed up, saddled up. Always want to take a rope with you. Since we don't know any knots, I already got a bowling in there for you. <laughs> and you don't want any, yeah, that's good. No kinks at all in there. You don't need to go that high and then go ahead and put a gaff in. You gotta kick it in a little bit. The further your knee goes into the tree, the more it pulls it out. So that, go ahead and. So, one an outside one? There you go. You want small steps. Yeah. When you bring your foot up that high, you're not kicking down. You're just kicking in. You might open that flip line up just an inch or two. Okay, just, just like an inch or two. One problem with standing like that, if you first come out, you're going to go... <laughs> So I try to keep my weight on the flip line so my spurs are staying in okay. and I just drag my left hand on that knot a little bit. Yeah. And bring that left foot up just a little bit. You're getting a great chance. It, it is surprisingly Kick that flip right out over your foot, yeah. This placement's not really good. You're hugging that tree a little too tight. Okay. I get my two feet at the same place. Straighten my legs out. Yep, straighten my legs out. There you go. And then if you want, you can leave a little stub on there on all three of those. Yeah. Or you could undercut it either way. 
Alright. your right hand your right hand on that side yeah no more on the front only the back all right start pulling dental dental cut 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 skirting them forward out between the houses nice and slow okay keep going oh uh, keep going Keep going. I think a little more. Stop, stop. That's perfect right there. Back it up a little bit. Bingo. Hey Jonathan here. Hopefully you enjoyed that video. I teach high school wood shop and then do tree work on the weekends. Those are some of my students out who were interested in learning how to do tree work. So I brought them along. Um, this is a wood shop here. No students right now. So what I do is I take trees down on the weekend. Usually bring them into school. We mill them out. This is some madrone wood right here that an ex-student of mine owns a tree service cut down for us. We mill it out into lumber and then make beautiful projects out of it. One thing I will say is if you're watching this video because you want to get into tree work, do not show up on the first day without knowing how to tie a bowline. So I think what I'm going to do next is just go over how to tie a bowline at my desk, uh, show up on day one knowing how to tie that knot, and you'll be one step ahead. So this channel is all things wood, from tree work to woodwork. Um, if you like it, hit like and subscribe. August Hanukkah just did a cool thing on a tool I invented today, the top saw. Um, so this ropes is coming to me and I want to try a loop on the end. I take a wrap over the top. The end of the rope goes up through the hole, 
around the back of this and through that way. So that's a bowl in there. Bowling is kind of the best knot for anything because it's so easy to untie. So even once it's loaded with a ton of weight and set really hard, even pulling cars or tree work or anything, you could just push this back to loosen it up. If you're using it as a safety knot, you want to tighten it up a little bit more and then tie an end, an overhand knot on this. So that's how you tighten it up. And the overhand knot on this. That's called the tail. And that way the tail can't run back up through the knot there. So you could right, tie a knot in that to prevent it or you could tie it back on itself right here. So that's your standard bowl in. I'll do it one more time. So kind of, I guess the important thing to remember is that this bike goes over, the tail comes up through the hole, around the rope feeding to you, and then back down through the hole. You tighten it up. I heard once, now in old England, if you knew how to tie a bowl and you'd be able to get a job on, a, on any ship. But you really don't want to show up and work for a tree service unless you know that bowling first. So that's a bowling. There are a lot of different things you could do with the bowling. Let's say I, I want to tie a slip knot. That's called a running bowling. So now the rope's coming down. I'm going to take the tail, put it over the end. So I'm just grabbing the rope there. And then I'm going to tie a bowline in here, up over the, up over. So I go up through the hole, around, and back through, seat it down. And now that's called a running bowline because I have this loop and then it just cinches up on that loop. So that's pretty common running bowl in for uh, tree work. So you, as soon as you get it on the ground, you could just loosen it up this way, turn the running bowl in over, crack that open, pull the tail out and untie it. So it's really the same as a bowl in. The only difference with a running bowl in is you create a loop at the end and go back over itself. Flip it over the top up through, around, and back through down. And there's your bowling on a loop, and that's a running bowling. And then last one is if you really, we can get a ton of rope out here. I don't want to pull all of the end through. I do it the same way. That loop goes up and over. I take a big loop bite, because I don't have the end. I don't want to pull all that end through. I come up through the hole just like I did but with the, with the bite, around the rope and back down through. So that's a bowling on the bite and then that way you have all this loose rope so you can see there's a lot more there, double rope there. And I guess if you want to keep going with different styles of bowling, every knot you tie in a rope compromises the strength of the rope. So the tighter the pins, the less strength you have in the rope. So there's a double strength bowling. So rather than take one loop like this, you actually take an additional loop like that. And that'll prevent it from getting so tight. And you can take that bite up and through, around the back, and back through down. And that right there is called a double strength bowling. And it's because I have two ropes in here and it gives you about 10 or 20% more rope strength because the bite isn't so tight. So all of them are kind of cool, but the one you really have to know is really just a standard bowline on the end of a rope. I'll do that one last time where I go around, it's over the top. I go up through the hole, around the rope, back through the hole. The only way you get good at tying knots is practicing them. 
So I, I would cut, you know, a 10 foot length of rope, put it next to your couch and while you're watching TV or something, just tie it again and again until you're really quick at tying bowlines. Okay, thank you for watching. This is Jonathan at Topsaw, all things wood from tree work to woodwork. I thought I'd include that uh, in case those boys want to watch this video and learn how to tie a bowline at the same time.